Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar on Color iMatch Quick Steps to Optimize Your Formulation Workflow. Presenting today is Jochen Mohr, an Application Specialist at X-Ray Pantone. I'm Robert Grotan from Global Technical Marketing Manager, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Just a few things to go over before we get started. Due to the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. If you have any questions, please use the questions function on the GoToWebinar panel. We'll have time to answer a few questions at the end. And if we don't get to your question, we usually try to follow up. Finally, this webinar will be recorded and you'll receive a link so that you can review the webinar at your convenience. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jochen to kick things off. So, okay, hello. So, <clears throat> Sorry. Right. So, hello. My name is Jochen Mohr. I'm working as an application specialist specialist for Xtrade Europe um, since 15 years, and I'm based in Switzerland. So, today for this webinar, we have two topics. So, the first one would be how to improve the correction workflow. Let's um, we talk about different parameters that you should have a look on. How to um, let's say, what, I, what can the, the graphics show me, and things like this. So the second topic would be how to correct production errors with the battery cycle fe uh, feature. Production errors, or may you will call it leftover, or you will call it return. So how can you really um, correct, let's say, uh, one batch um, which was not approved? Um, and actually, we received quite a lot of questions from customers if this is possible with the software and we will show you now so when we speak about corrections so it's important that we know what or uh, why corrections are necessary and what are influencing them for example so um, first one so we can have a variation in substrates or resins like in textile if you use different materials with a diff different absorption factor um, as well in plastics, if you use different resins. So always when the software is not calibrated on these materials, may corrections will be necessary. Um, second one would be variations in color strengths of your primaries, for example. Um, this can have a lot of reasons. Let's say um, liquid paint, for example, if, you, if your supplier delivers this in summer or winter, they can have different viscosities. So different viscosities, viscosities means different color strengths. So as well, uh, particle size, for example, can be a reason. So if the size is bigger, more color strengths, size, uh, lower, lower color strength. Things like this, they all have an influence and makes it necessary for software to give you a correction of the formula. As well, variation in environmental um, environmental conditions like temperature or humidity, um, especially when you have, let's say, hypromatic colors like um, a, a high saturated reds, for example, they are very, very sensitive of temperature. So if you just have a temperature increase of two degrees, so you will get different color readings on this red, for example. As well, humidity is important. From my experience, uh, different scales, they react uh, very crazy actually when the humidity uh, is quite high or moving up and down. So this all can have an influence um, on your formula and can make it um, can be the reason to make a correction necessary. Um, as well, application errors. So if the user is not using the right film thickness, if he applies, um, if he's taking the wrong Ink knife, for example, um, if he's taking the wrong particle size of a pigment. So all this um, can have or will have um, we create corrections. So and of course there are a lot of um, other reasons for this. So please be aware. So to have stable conditions. So then as the more stable your conditions are, as less corrections are necessary. So how does it look in the software? Let's say 
Um, we got a formula from the software. We already mixed it and we applied it. But now um, you see it here in the middle, the red number, we got delta E of 4.45. Actually, our tolerance would be 0 0.3 delta E. So um, what can be the reason? And now we have to analyze this. First, I have a look on the graphics. Down there, we see the spectral curve. And let's say, so blue is our standard, red is the trial. So it's queued out. Yeah, so something is wrong here. So um, maybe we, we don't have enough saturation, but as well in the absorption, there are differences. Let's take another few. So now I will have a look on the LAB plot. And what I can see here, yeah, the color is far off, um, but it's in one line with the saturation line that we have in this LAB plot. So this means maybe I'm not, um, I don't have the right color strengths um, in my trial. So let's analyze the numbers that are given by the system. And when I start with the uh, chroma, the difference in the chroma for this sample would be more than 11 units. So this is an indicator, something is wrong with the color strengths. And when I look on the color strengths value, I can see it's lower. So it's just 76.78%. Uh, so something is wrong with this trial. This trial does not represent your normal workflow. So to make a correction with this trial, would make no sense. So therefore, we ask you really, so if you have a case like this, please check viscosity, check the film thickness, check the scale, or check your environment conditions. Please make sure that everything is calibrated and well set up um, for this. Because when we do it again, then may it looks like this, that we get um, a color distance of 0 0.4 delta E. And this is possible to correct. Now I click the correction button and you see here I get a color distance of 0 0.24. Uh, but remember, our tolerance is 0 0.3. So 0 0.24, it's within tolerance, but still too close to the edges. So um, what can I change here now? Until now, for the corrections, we just have used the tolerance which have been in the initial formula. So we didn't add any new colors. So maybe now it um, makes sense. So I click just in the settings. And here you see in the colorance selection, I click the checkbox allow new colorants. But as well, it would be possible to work with groups. For example, you can divide your colorants that you use into group, two groups, anorganic and organic. And within the con correction workflow, you can decide now if the correction should begin with your organic pigments or with your non-organic pigments to avoid any troubles here. So, and when I did this, then you see now my formula shows a color difference of 0 0.09. So this is a very good result. So all axes are very good balance. So this is a very controllable and stable recipe. So with this recipe, this is good to be sent to the production. So, second topic, how does the batch recycle work? Um, we have the scenario here, this is the reality between lab and production. So we have the, the lab and everything works well, everything is well calibrated in the lab. They create a recipe and this recipe is approved and it shows a color distance lower than 0 0.3 delta E. So now the lab is transferring this information to the production. So in the production facility, a lot of things are automated um, and they produce this recipe now. But may something happen and maybe from the dispensing system, a valve was not set up correctly or anything else. Something happens, so the color or the recipe is coming out wrong with a delta E higher than three, for example. What you can do now with this um, batch? Very often it happens that as well production staff tries to correct this recipe, but 
they cannot make it really better, but now you have no control what is in the batch. Yeah, so it's not recorded, not recorded properly. So in the software, it's quite easy. So you just add this information to your collection. You just say, okay, I want to have a waste, as we call it in the software. You just select this um, reading in the software from the, the menu below. And then when you select, when, it, when this waste is part of your collection, then the software is forced to reduce it. And while you are formulating this color, so this window will show up where you first define the batch size that you would like to create, how much of your waste is available. And then if you know the estimated resin amount that are in the waste, and then the minimum or maximum quantity that you have to use. So, and when I do this with my orange, so you see, I get nine recipes, I get nine formulas. And as I mentioned, the software is now forced to use this pale orange, as I called it. And now you can see this is the best formula I can get. So the formula shows delta E of 0 0.13. And it's actually quite neutral here. So easy to control and easy to continue with. So this function can save you a lot of time and quite a lot of money if you can, let's say, recycle your batches. So this was, this was our fast webinar with um, these two topics. So if you have any questions, if you have any, um, if you would like to get more information, um, you can raise your questions now. Yeah, thank you, Jochen. Um, so we have time for a few questions. Uh, feel free to submit one. I see one question here already. Can I restrict the combination of certain pigments with iMatch or define specific conditions to not use certain pigments? Um, yes, this is possible. So you can define uh, the percentage, the limitation so that um, for example, um, if, you, if your pH value is, is uh, critical in, for one pigment, then you can restrict, let's say, this pigment in a combination with another pigment that not more than 3% in combination are getting used. This feature is available with IMAGE 10, yes. Another question is, how smart of a match is used for correction? I don't know if you can talk more about that. Um, let's say, so if your tolerant file is well set up, if your process is stable, then we would say um, with uh, one correction, you can get close or very close. So we say if the, um, the whole workflow is set up very well, one correction. That's the goal. Um, for fine tuning, sometimes two corrections are necessary, but they should be straightforward. So. Um, with IMAGE 10, we have completely re uh, reworked the correction workflow so that what you have seen here in the presentation is actually representing the, the normal workflow we expect from IMAGE. So with one correction, you're close, very close to your tolerance, and then you do, uh, you do the fine tuning. So this is actually um, completely reworked and working very well in IMAGE 10. Question about databases. Um, are any databases needed to input in advance? I don't know. If, I think this might be just asking you to expand on how databases work, perhaps. I mean, um, when we take, let's say, colorant files from competitors, sometimes this is called databases. Um, yes, we can take over colorant file from other systems on the market, but this is possible to import in IMATCH 10. Um, so we can handle this data. 
We'll take one more question. Still doing three of them right now. Does the same process you illustrated work for plastic applications? The same will work as well for plastic applications, but plastic is a, is a huge field. So um, IMAGE 10 has a new math for plastics. So results um, are very good. And as well, the correction in, in, for plastics in IMAGE has improved um, uh, quite a lot. So if you ask me, yes, I would say yes, uh, as well, this, what we have shown could work for plastics as well. Perfect. Thank you. We have a few questions here also just on the presentation itself. We will send out the recording tomorrow, so that will go out to all of you. Um, we're just about out of time for today, so we will end here. Again, thank you for your questions. And if you have a very specific question that we didn't get to, I'll send them to Yokin and we'll try to follow up with you offline. So again, thanks everyone for joining and have a great rest of your day.